The potentiometer is a three pin device and here we've just numbered them one, two, and three just conventionally so we have a good reference point when we're doing our explanations. And maybe also we could pick some conventions and just say, let's call it uh, that if you rotate the shaft clock clockwise, you'll move the, uh, the wiper maybe over that direction. And if you move it counterclockwise, you know, uh, we can say pin one's the counterclockwise pin. So let's use those conventions and um, we'll explain how to use the potentiometer as a variable resistor. And later on, we will look at how to use a potentiometer uh, as a potentiometer. And in that case, you would use all three pins um, and you would actually get a variable voltage out of that. But that'll be down the road. First of all, we want to just show you, um, I guess the main point is of this video is to get the variable resistor uh, implemented and show you the schematic symbols. Because I know we showed you physically um, how it's wired and, and show I and mean, you've seen it working. The main point of this video is to get the symbols straightened out so that they don't uh, look strange to you. So it is just being used, uh, uh, just two of the pins are being used if you're gonna use it as a variable resistor. You don't need the third one. However, we do find a use for the third one as a fail safe. So that's what I wanna explain. So to get it going as a variable resistor, even in your exercises, I think you've seen just you pick two pins. Now you do have to use the, the wiper, of course, um, as one of them. And then your choice, whether you want to pick, um, you know, pin three, as we as we labeled it, or pin one is up to you. Uh, obviously, the choices uh, have repercussions. So at pin three gives you a zero to one K variable resistor and it goes from zero to 1k when you move it counterclockwise. Um, if you were to pick, uh, if you, so uh, that would be if you picked pin three. If you, for your usable pin, then you get a, a counterclockwise increase in resistance. Um, of course, you can do the opposite, uh, the opposite. You could leave pin three unused, don't use it, and you would use pins, uh, you would use pins two and pin one right? And if that's the case, you get clockwise increase in resistance, just the opposite. So, and I think you can see it over here. If we go back to our, our main drawing here, when you move clockwise, you're moving, you're moving away, right? You're moving away from pin one. And so you get this whole resistance. So hopefully, okay, those mechanics are still there for you from the previous video. But those are your choices. Pick, pick pin two, and one of the outside pins. Now we're going to show you why we actually have a use for that unused pin, if that makes sense. The reason is one of the common failures for a, for a potentiometer is um, right here where the wiper can lose contact with the fixed resistance. It can get dirty, it could break, it could just, uh, you know, in some way have a bad connection or lose contact altogether. If it does that, if that occurs, you can see how it fails. Um, if we don't have the outs, the unused pin is just left unused, we have a failure open for infinite ohms. And that becomes an issue a lot of times, that's a big issue because that is not prepared for, a lot of times it's being used as a control and the system that it's controlling has been designed to respond to a range of zero to one K. It is not capable of handling an infinite resistance. Uh, so strange things can happen, bad things can happen. So we can do a better failure, um, what you would call a fail safe uh, design. And look, in this drawing, we still have that failure where the wiper loses contact with the fixed resistance. But look what kind of prevents it from failing open. We've taken what was and still in some ways is our unused outside pin, and we've tied it to the wiper. We've shared that point. So now if the wiper breaks, it doesn't fail open. Look at the resistive path that exists still of 1K. So it will fail not to infinite ohms, but to 1K, which is a designed value anyway that the system can handle it can i mean the system's designed to handle that so it's not it's not an outright failure it just moves to 1k 
and this is how we accomplished it. We used, I mean, and we and now we can kind of put that in quotes, huh? It's the unused outside pin. It's unused in the sense that it doesn't affect the variable resistance. It it just gives us a fail safe to 1K. And hopefully you can stare at this and understand that it doesn't change the operation. I mean, because that's, I think, the big point too. Look down here, the schematic symbol that's used then, and let's try to convince ourselves that it operates the same as up here, uh, as this uh, drawing. So I think comparing comparing these two drawings here is the big goal for this video that you can convince yourself that they, the operation hasn't changed other than if the wiper fails. Um, it fails safe. This I think is very uh, at the top here is very easy for people to see. You know this this one's very easy for people to see. I hope the variable resistance that exists between the two the two terminals. And then this th at the bottom here it sometimes throws people for a loop. All of this stuff in here. But let's see if we can understand it. I mean I, I think staring at it the the wiper is still brought out you know so that's our pin too and then also one of the outside pins and again it could be pin one or pin three but if it is pin one then over here is pin three and if the unused pin in quotes kind of is pin three then you have pin one do you see it works the same? I mean, let's take some extremes here, right? You still have variable resistance here, even though it might be bothering you a little bit. If I move that wiper over, I get it, I can get it all the way to this point. At which point, what do I have? I pulled the wiper back to here. Do you see that? Do you see that now I have all of this on this side of the resistance? So I have all of the 1K. So I would say, um, when the wiper's in this position, I have 1K, but then I can slide the wiper across here, right? When I get the wiper all the way over here, right? I can just dot it over there. There's zero ohms, right? So I can move it all the way over. So hopefully you can convince yourself that um, the schematic symbol does show the same operation of a variable resistor. And it's got the tie point to give you the fail safe. So that's the big thing with this video, just trying to get you comfortable with um, these schematic symbols and understanding what, what, what this one is mainly. You do have a simpler schematic symbol. Some people opt for that. I think it might be a little less, less confusing, maybe you could say. I don't know. Um, but there's something to remember about it. So over here, we've got another option. Both of these are valid symbols for a variable resistor. It's just your choice, really. Um, and the one here on the right just shows a resistance with a with an arrow through it. And the arrow through it is just a generic way to say that the resistance is variable. So do not think that this arrow here has anything to do with pin two. It does not. It is strictly a slash through the resistance telling you the resistance is variable somehow. And it's used for lots of things. It's used not just for a pot being used as a variable resistor, but it would be used for maybe a thermistor whose resistance varies with heat and so on. So any kind of variable resistance, this is like a this is like a generic symbol for that. So my big thing to tell you is don't associate the arrow in in this schematic symbol. Um, with the wiper in any way. It's not. Where is the wiper? The wiper's over here. And then it's also tied to either pin one or pin three. And what is this end? Well, it's either pin three or pin one. So, okay. So that's the, uh, I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. Um, we can talk about it more if it doesn't.